Oh my gosh. Yeah, I am so tired. Holy cow. What is going on everybody? I hope everybody's having a great day and I hope some of you are getting a lot better weather than I have been lately. Lately all it's been doing here has been rainy, windy, cold, it's just it's just been nasty and it's been pretty much that weather where you just sit inside, Netflix and chill, maybe drink a coffee, because that's about all I've been doing. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys, and it's kind of a little late in the fall to be bringing this up, but I think this video will help a lot of you guys out, especially if you guys fish in the Midwest. now. Growing up, uh, I fished ponds. I don't know if, if you guys know me and you watch my videos. I, I was not a big lake fisherman. I didn't have a boat or anything like that when I was younger. And the basis of my fishing experience and all my fishing knowledge came from fishing ponds or just fishing from the shore. And uh, that was not a bad thing. And especially where I'm from here in the Midwest, that's a lot of what we do here. We don't have a lot of big lakes. Uh, you know, that are known for bass fishing and stuff like that. Today we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the start of pre-fall fishing, like right when fall starts, what you guys need to be doing, what you need to look out for, all the way up into winter hitting. So let's talk, you know, just like the start of fall. If you guys are unfamiliar with the stages of how fall works and what bass are doing this time of year, it's that things are cooling down and fish need to stock up on food. Okay, it's just like any animal, winter's coming around, they want to fatten up, they want to get their self prepped to be able to make it through the winter. And uh, the biggest factor to think about here when it comes to fall is what the bass are going to be feeding on. And that's going to be your bait fish, your migration of shad. This is the time of year that bait fish come in full flood. They're reaching those creek channels. They're moving into the rivers. They're coming up shallow. Um, you know, this is the time of year that bass are going to be chasing those schools of shad to try and just, you know, lunker up and get real fat. So at the start of fall, now, you know, things aren't entirely that cold yet. We're making that transition where you get a couple cold days, you still get your warm t-shirt days, and things aren't fully there. I like to work a lot of moving baits. I like to fish baits that move a little bit faster, but still represent a lot of food. Uh, so the first thing I always like fishing in the fall when it comes to that is going to be a spinnerbait. A spinnerbait allows you to still get up shallow. You know, it imitates bait fish. If you guys don't know that, these are literally the main bait fish imitation right here. They're easy to fish. You can fish them in all sorts of cover. You can bump up against stumps and all kinds of stuff. You can pretty much throw a spinnerbait and cover that you need to throw it. And uh, it's just a very productive bait. You tend to get a lot of fish on it. Uh, you get to cover a lot of water and things work really great. You can really get a feel for where those fish are at and what they're biting on. So that's like my number one go-to to go for the start of the fall. So even though the water temperatures haven't completely dropped yet, like I said, you're gonna get those back and forth temperatures and all those you know, cold fronts and warm fronts coming through. Sometimes those fish get finicky. Sometimes they get stubborn and they'll tuck up and cover and you know they, they'll just have a tricky bite. When I get into that time frame where I really can't figure out what the bite is on, I like to get into one of these guys right here. Uh, that is a chatterbait. Now this isn't too far off from the presentation of a spinnerbait. If you guys can see, they're somewhat similar. They got a, they got a skirt, they got a weighted head, and uh, what a chatterbait allows me to do is get really tight in that cover. I like to throw chatterbaits right up into stumps. I like to throw them right on that shoreline and crank these things in. They're a little more erratic, they're louder, and uh, they just tend to get the fish fired up. It seemed like when I couldn't get anything to move on something like this, or I couldn't get something else to work, throwing a chatterbait tended to be the ticket for me. I can actually show you guys a clip right here where I'm in my kayak and I'm throwing a chatterbait. I was slaying fish a couple weeks ago just wailing them on a chatterbait. This just, nothing else was working and this just seemed to be the ticket. So uh, yeah, that's like another go-to I like to go for you guys. But let's say you guys aren't feeling the spinnerbait or the chatterbait. Maybe you're fishing a pond that has a rock lay down. Maybe you're at a lake dam where it's just all rocks. Maybe you know, you're in that situation where you still want to target bait fish, but you want to get down, you want to get into those rocks, and you still want to get a feel for those fish. Uh, the main thing that I like to go to is a lipless crank or a square bell. You can work this a little bit faster, and you can get you know, where you need to go. You can cover a lot of water with something like this. Or you can grab a square bell like this where you're gonna be able to dig into those rocks. You wanna get into you know, that shallow cover where you're fishing maybe that two to three foot range. 
uh, again, this is gonna be a very productive bait, and uh, square bills are a lot of fun to fish. This is a good time of year to get into fishing one of these guys if you can't fish it. Say you're stuck fishing you know, the pond all summer long and you're getting hung up in weeds and stuff. You know, This is a prime time of the year to be fishing this bait. Sunrise and sunset can be a super productive time for top water this time of year. So if you guys want to get into fishing some top water, I would recommend throwing a whopper plopper. I do not have one in front of me here, but I'll post a picture right here. Boom, whopper ploppers work great this time of year. Uh, and if I'm not going to be fishing a whopper plopper, the next thing I'm going to pick up is a walking bait. So if you guys can see right here, I got a big old spook. Uh, these guys are super, super fun to fish. It's nice to get a good walk on there. You can fish it at a moderate speed and the fish are going to whale these. It's a, that early fall peak is a great time of year to fish top water. All right, so I covered, you know, the beginning of fall per se. Like I said, there's there's a variety of stuff you guys can fish. I focus just on moving baits, the spinner bait, chatter bait, square bill, lipless crank, baits that I can move in and out of that water column. I can get them shallow. I can fish rocks. I can fish weeds. I can fish, you know, a little bit of everything. Now let's say we're dead fall, right? Things have, you know, reached a pretty consistent temperature. Things are getting cold. The water temperature is starting to drop, and the fish aren't you know, super active. They're not going to be chasing those spinner baits. They're not going to be feeding as heavily, but they're still feeding hard. This is the time of year that I like to pick up, you know, big, bigger baits in a bigger size in a slower presentation. So we're going to get into baits like this. I'm not a big swim bait guy, to be honest with you guys, but it's the time of year to be picking up a swim bait. I got a, you know, swim bait right here. Maybe you want to get a little bit lower in the water column uh, and you just want to fish things that are going to move lethargic. Now these fish still have the appetite to still stock up, but they're not going to go too far out of their way to maybe hit something. That's when you guys get into these just big, low and slow baits. Uh, if you guys have seen the swim bait videos I've made before, those could work too. Those HUD baits, if you guys are big HUD fishermen, you can start throwing those, but swim baits are a good go-to and that's what I like to start using as things start panning down. So that's literally my basis on fall fishing guys for, you know, the beginning of fall and the center of fall. Don't be afraid to get out there and mix it up. Every time it seems like the fish are on a different pattern, but I do focus on that one thing and that is what they're going to be feeding on. Depending on your situation, don't be afraid to dabble into these baits right here. I guarantee you they'll be successful for you. Maybe not in this particular order, but always have them in your tackle box when you're getting out there and doing some fall fishing. Now we've reached that point of fall where things have slowed down and the water temperatures got colder and the bite's just a little bit harder to figure out. This is the time of year that it can be really, really, really successful. Some of these fish may already be super fat, still, still hungry. Some of them may be picky and you know they're willing to eat but they're not gonna go too far out of their way. Uh, but the main factor is water temperatures have dropped and they are now lethargic. Um, so this is the time of year that you really need to slow things down. This is the time of year that a lot of big guys will start picking up big swim baits. I know this one isn't giant right here, but it's just what I can find at the moment. I'm really not a big swim bait guy, but uh, this will do. So they're going to pick up those swim baits that you can slow roll in deep in the water column. Maybe you can slow roll them um, you know, in ponds and stuff like that where they don't have to go that far out of the way, but if you put it in front of them, they're gonna get a big meal. And if the swim bait isn't cutting it, then we're really gonna take that change. And we're gonna go to something like this. So that water temperature has dropped now, guys. You wanna get tight in that cover. You wanna hug the bottom, pick up a bass jig, you know, flip into that shoreline, flip into that cover, and just slowly work this guy. I can guarantee you guys, if you get this in front of a fish, uh, it's gonna pick it up and you're gonna get a good old bite. This is the time of year, guys, where it's it's pretty freaking rewarding. Uh, you pick a fish off a jig, you know, at the end of fall, it's gonna be a fat fish and it's gonna be a fun fish to catch. The bite's gonna be a lot more subtle and it's gonna be a lot, you're gonna have to feel a lot harder for those baits and uh, you're gonna be working through a lot of, you know, died off cover and stuff like that. But if you get it in the right spot, it's pretty darn rewarding. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about that end of fall, early winter transition. This is the time where everybody put their boats away, they're putting their gear away. Some of the guys are breaking out their hunting equipment, their full hunt mode. They have no interest in even fishing anymore. And I don't blame them. This is the time of year where it's you know, only gonna be 35, 40 degrees out at most. And uh, it just sucks. Your eyelets are freezing. Your line is freezing cold. Your hands are freezing cold. Everything is just like took a turn for the worst. Now, a lot of people may just pack things up and put things away. But if you're willing, you're gonna wanna listen to this. Um, I've got out there 
in early December, I'm talking the first week of December, and caught some of the biggest bass I have ever caught in my life. What me and my cousin were doing last year is we were taking these guys right here. This right here is a Berkeley Havoc Pit Boss. This is a bait uh, that just kills it for me this time of year. And what we like to do is we like to take this guy, we like to Texas rig it, and we don't even wait it. We like to get up shallow and resort to those spots. You know, even those summer spots where you tend to find bass, we like to just get up in there and we like to flip these things and just let them slowly, slowly, slowly fall to the bottom. We'll let these guys sit at the bottom and we'll just super, super slowly lift them off the bottom and let them fall again. And they'll have that nice, just subtle float and then that kind of subtle fall down. And they'll float up and they'll fall down. And when you get this thing in front of a fish's face, they tend to slurp them up. Me and my cousin, we were catching more four and five pound bass, you know, in that time frame more than ever before. I'll show you guys some pictures right here of the bass we were catching. And I'm talking, I was in snow pants and stuff like that. In, in Ohio, we were catching these big old bass just doing something like this. Like I said, these fish are not gonna go out of their way to get it, so don't expect to get numbers. But when you do get into one, I can guarantee you it's gonna be a sweet darn fish. That's all I kinda wanna talk to you guys about today. I just wanted to cover fall a little bit. There's not a lot of information when it comes to you know fall fishing in the Midwest, and a lot of guys I feel are discouraged to get out there. Maybe they're not ready to put their rods away and they wanna catch fish. So whether it's the beginning of the fall and you can fish all sorts of things and catch a lot of fish, maybe it's the middle of the fall where the bite is just hot and you're catching pigs, or maybe it's the end of fall where you gotta work harder than ever before to catch the biggest fish of your life, uh, it doesn't matter. It's all about getting out there, figuring it out. You guys are from Ohio. If you're from the Midwest, you have so many different seasons out here. It changes so much. One day it's 90 degrees. One day it's 30. The weather is so bipolar over here. It's uh, it's crazy. And, it, and sometimes it just gets really hard and frustrating to figure out, you know, the bite on those fish. So I always like to take a variety with me, guys. And uh, if there's any questions you guys have for me or any information you would like for me to share with you, or maybe I missed something and you want to leave it, uh, you know, to remind me down below, go ahead and leave a comment down there. And uh, you know the deal. Social medias are in the drop down. Uh, I post a lot of stuff on Instagram. I update a lot of stuff on Instagram if you guys just want to stay updated with me. And uh, other than that, if you guys are new here, subscribe if you like the content and want to subscribe you know, go for it. Otherwise, you guys know the deal. I'm Jordan from Tightline TV, and we'll catch you in the next video.